AM 710 WETG and 100.5 W263PE Rose Hill. This is the Community and Small Business Update with Lee Woodard on Surge Radio. Good morning, Duplin County. Uh, what a rainy Saturday it is. Hopefully things are still progressing well at the Pink Hill Rose Festival. Uh, I'm sure check your social media to see how things are going. And I think it's Heritage Day in Keenansville. Um, that's right. That's right. And so uh, don't let the rain, have, if you listen to the forecast, it's not a total washout today. So um, pay attention, get out there and enjoy your weekend. Um, you are listening to the Community and Small Biz Update for Duplin County. I am Lee Woodard, your host. Today we've got Kurt Simpson as our guest. The show is brought to you by uh, James Brunt Community College, your bridge to success, and the Small Business Center at James Brunt. It's been a uh, busy year. It's been a good year at the Small Business Center. We are in the process of redoing our workshops and schedules. Look for something coming out in uh, mid-June uh, with our new schedule going through July through December. So we'll have a lot more workshops and courses. And Kurt, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, man. How about you? No, I'm doing fantastic. Awesome. Um, we've got a lot of things to talk about. We've got some stuff coming up uh, for the chamber. But before we um, get started on that, tell me, I was out of town last weekend in Florida. Tell me about the Strawberry Festival. The Strawberry Festival could not have gone better, actually. Um, they are saying we had record crowds, uh, estimates around 20,000 people. Uh, I don't know how you estimate those numbers, but they, that's what the officials are saying right around 20,000 people, uh, for the two days. And, uh, I think I spoke to about half of them. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of folks there. Um, I had a good time. We had our 5k, uh, race, um, on Saturday morning and it went as smoothly as it has ever gone, which, um, we've always had pretty good luck with our, our 5k races, but, um, we had help from the folks at Biden Duplin hospital and, um, they brought in a lot of volunteers and they showed up and they were where they were supposed to be and, and just did a great job. So, uh, had a, a pretty decent turnout for the race as well. And we raised some money for stroke awareness, uh, some programs that the hospital foundation uh has going on and um so it was it was a lot of fun the, the bands were great uh brian mayer played here uh for the strawberry festival and then i understand he's supposed to be playing at the rose festival in pink hill today so i hope that doesn't get rained out i, don't, I haven't checked um right. don't know if that's happening or not so. okay um, yeah, I saw lots of uh, updates on Facebook and a lot of updates uh, on other social media as the, the day went on as I was in Florida. Yeah, it was pretty awful. It was uh, 80 degrees and no humidity <laughs> sitting on the uh, Gulf of Mexico. But, uh, nice, nice. <laughs> but I was working, so yeah. no. Uh, yeah, yeah, you weren't enjoying it anyway. No, no, yeah. it was miserable. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> No, um, so uh, from the chamber's perspective, uh, did you achieve all the objectives you were looking for? Well, we did. I mean, you know, the main thing is to get folks downtown. And, uh, you know, we're bringing more people downtown every year. Um, and, and the chamber, while the Chamber of Commerce, we really are more just a helper in this. It's not our festival. It's actually put on by the Strawberry Festival Committee, uh, which is headed up by Matt Livingston, the town manager here. And he's done a great job. Um, you know, they get the, the town employees help out. Uh, you know, obviously they're paid employees, but they also put in a lot of extra volunteer time to make this thing happen. And then, uh, you know, all the, uh, the merchants seem to be really happy. Um, one thing that uh, I thought was a, a really neat thing is this year, the T-shirt, the, the festival T-shirt has always been popular, but they had never sold it ahead of time. So they started selling the festival T-shirt maybe two weeks ahead of time or something like that. I think they sold out of the T-shirts. Well, that's excellent. It was, it was very good. I mean, it was, it's really cool. It's got some art on there by Hope Smith uh, at Art of Hope downtown, and uh, she does a really good job with with that every year, coming up with something new. And the, so the festival T-shirts are really popular, but uh, we usually end up with some, you know, after the festival, and then you've got old t-shirts that nobody really wants and you try right. to sell them and you just can never really get rid of them well this year they don't have any left over oh, so um yeah yes yeah, so it was good it was yeah good. and we actually bought um our daughter rachel went to china 
few weeks ago, and as a gift for the family she's staying with, she took the Strawberry Festival 2016 print that Hope oh, did, cool. and mm-hmm. that was their gift to the family. So they have a little Wallace there in China, uh, Xingzhou or something. I have no idea how to pronounce where she's at, but if you draw a <laughs> triangle, between, uh, she's between Beijing and Shanghai about okay. midway so mm-hmm. uh, right on the water but uh i know right what you're talking about absolutely and I, you, I, I, I knew you needed the map of china <laughs> right <laughs> like the back of your hand just like beautiful <laughs> i do i do beautiful wallace china <laughs> yeah so anyway i keep getting these funny symbols on my phone when she calls i don't know what they mean but <laughs> squiggle i'm starting i'm starting to recognize it means maybe i'm supposed to pick my phone up <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but um well, that's great. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it was good. It, talking about uh, some of the things that have been going on, one of the things that the Small Business Center is just really starting to do, I guess it goes back about a year, Google um, made the announcement, or not the announcement, they did the crunch the numbers um, when uh, in rural areas, especially this applies, that more and more people are using their smartphones to find stuff wherever they are. Um, and that includes even if you're a local in a small community, you're going to your um, smartphone to find out when something's open, when it's closed, uh, what kind of products and services it offers, or all kinds of things. And um, something like 86% of us are using our smartphone to find things. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in small rural towns, especially less than 30% of the businesses are actually online. So when yeah. we go to look, we're not seeing everything that's available. And right. so. They started this initiative to get your cities online. Obviously, Google benefits, sure, but the businesses do too. They've done a lot of good work to show that getting your businesses online at about a 15 or 20 percent increase is about $300,000 in additional business for Mm -hmm. those organizations that choose to get online. And so we have sort of adopted that at the Small Business Center, trying to get, um, you know, all of our businesses um, online and showing them how to do that so they're on the map. Um, and we've got uh, something special coming up uh, this Thursday, right? We do indeed. We do indeed. Um, a couple of things uh, going on this Thursday, but the main one that you're talking about is the Get Your Business Online seminar, uh, which uh, you're, we are partnering together, the Chamber and the Small Business Center, and putting that on at uh, Wallace Presbyterian Church. It starts at 6 o'clock on Thursday. And we will help you do what is pretty a fairly simple process. But if you don't just sit down and do it, it's not going to happen. And that's right. get your business online. And uh, now we have the video up. You can see that I'm wearing the cool T-shirt. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Google really is providing a lot of uh, support stuff, uh, mm-hmm. uh, including uh, suggestions on how to, to get your businesses online, T-shirts like you're wearing today. Mm-hmm. Uh, bags that have that uh, let's get Wallace on the map let's get Beulahville on the map Mm -hmm. let's get Keenansville on the map those types of things just trying to help uh, businesses uh, recognize and and I have said a couple times on this show that you know we do have some local businesses who have received bad reviews either Mm -hmm. through Google Plus or through Yelp Mm -hmm. and because they're not online they have no idea those uh, bad reviews are sitting there and if anyone's traveling through the county looking for something to eat or uh and they see those reviews it's unlikely they'll stop if they have no idea okay. about that and one of the things i run into all the time is i'll tell these businesses look you've got some bad reviews out there and they go well i don't have an account so it's almost <laughs> as if they believe the reviews don't exist and they'll, sorry, they'll go away if i don't acknowledge them that's right <laughs> And what I try to tell small businesses is, look, you don't today, it doesn't matter whether you have an account or not. If you've got a physical address, people can say things about that address. Uh, That's what Google Maps is all about. But what you can do is you can go in and let Google know you're the owner Mm -hmm. of this address or the owner of this business. And once you've demonstrated that, now you have the power to choose what pictures come up. You get to add information and you get to respond to anything that's on there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, one of the best things a small business can have is a bad review if and I say if they respond to that bad review and get get it resolved and get the person to go post a positive one and then um, all kinds of good things happen to the business but just it's been a struggle to get people to recognize it no longer is waiting on you to get an account before stuff happens it happens whether you're involved or not (laughs) right and so it's been a little hard to explain to them and i suspect on thursday we'll be explaining that too and and i expect we'll probably have to explain it again even after that um i 
don't know how many people will have turnout. I hope we have a good crowd. We may not. Did you see the uh, stats on our, and I don't want to jump the gun because we're going to talk about constant contact separately, but did you see the stats and the click through? I did. So I did. we've had over 30 people click through and mm-hmm. look, we sent it to 211 p- businesses, entities, individuals. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, if you're in double digits, uh, constant contact, as far as click throughs, you're pretty, you're doing they're a really well. good job. Mm-hmm. So we, could have and you know i would believe half of those might show up so we might have 15 people yeah which, is, so. which would be maybe excellent so. um but you know trying to get people to understand that um managing your web presence is so important today and that, that's mm-hmm. something if you've never done it before i'm sure it's a foreign concept yeah it is i mean if you've you've had your business for for 30 years and online was not anything you ever thought about when you first got into this then why would you start thinking about it one day and say, oh, well, I've really got to get on top of this? Well, you, you really do need to. Uh, right. You might not want to worry about whether you are in the yellow pages or not because nobody's reading that anymore. That's right. But, uh, but the online presence is very, very important now. I use it all the time. Now, not everybody is as tied to their phone as I am. I'm, right. But – um, uh, my parents, they're not using that, <laughs> but they are 84 and 82. Right. Uh, so, um, you know, they, but they will actually, oddly enough, they will ask me to look things up for them. Right. Occasionally. They don't have a computer at home. They don't mess with any of that, but <clears throat> yeah. Do they have a smartphone? <laughs> okay. Oh no, no, okay. no, no. <laughs> they do have a flip phone. Okay. They've got a flip phone, which they won't turn on because I don't know. They may think it'll start a fire or something like right. that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, I love you folks. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're not listening either, so right. I can say anything about them I want. So. Right. <laughs> but the um, you said it was going to be at six at the Wallace Presbyterian That's Church, right. and we're all going to sort of bring our laptops. And um, yeah. But one of the things I did want to mention two. the there will be a general information session. Um, it's going to be headed up by Jeannie Yuri, who mm-hmm. is the executive director of the North Carolina Retail Merchants Association. Mm-hmm. She's been doing this across the state for. Mm, almost a year since this started Mm -hmm. and so the retail merchants association obviously believes getting your business online is important for your business and and those types of things and so she's coming um she will explain to uh the attendees why you need to do it Mm -hmm. um and then as you said it'll be very hands-on we'll be helping businesses get their business online we have set the uh, small business center up as a host uh, for get your business online so anyone who can't make it um, can get up with the small business center and we can do the chamber the same way so that you know as new members join the chamber one of the things that we could do is check and see if they're online and if not let's get them online right then because uh, that's an important it, it's it'll be even more important as we move forward yeah. um, well, one thing I want to add too is it doesn't just have to be for-profit businesses oh, uh, no. churches I looked up, um, I actually looked up the Presbyterian Church, and there are some things that we need to correct on that, and I'm starting to work on it a little bit, but um, the uh, there is a counseling center at our church, which I'm very proud of. I'm glad we have that, but if you look up right now on Google uh, Wallace Presbyterian Church, what you're going to find is the Presbyterian Counseling Center, center sewing bleh, showing up at 205 uh, West Main Street, and uh, that's the church itself. So we need to fix that because, right. um, you know, the, the counseling center, while important, is just a small part of the church. But um, other churches around probably don't show up at all. So if you want your church to show up, if you want your service times to show up online, because people are looking that up too, then have someone from your church come out and uh, let's get them up too. Yeah, so. that, that's that's really uh, a good point. It's any organization, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, if you type, have a physical address, that's yeah, right. Yeah. It's any organization, and um, even if you're renting and you don't own that address, mm-hmm. you can still mm-hmm. show Google that you are the renter, and Absolutely. then you get to manage that address as that business. Um, and the other thing that it does, in addition to to try and bring money when you connect and get your business online and you put your website or even forward your facebook page now the search engine optimization gives you extra credit for being connected and so there makes it easier uh for someone to find you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and so we're hopeful we're going to start at six. Rumor has it you might even bring some pizza. Maybe so. No, maybe okay. so. I, or, or maybe so. I don't. I, I don't know exactly what it will be, but it'll be mm-hmm. something delicious, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and probably cheap. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, that's the good news. I mean, if you if you look at it, you know, our diets are bad because we eat the cheap. Good, the, exactly, good things, exactly. Right? Filling and cheap is what what okay. we go for, well, which that, is why I'm shaped the way I am. That works for me. Um, <laughs> But, you know, what, well, one of the things, too, that uh, has come up um, with uh, trying to get businesses online, the other one is uh, getting your marketing together so you're reaching um, your current customers on a regular basis and reaching prospective customers on a frequent basis. Right. Um, and then others that may not be customers but can be resources or can refer your business. You know, how do you communicate with all of those folks? And our networks are gotten broader it's harder to have a, a, a weekly conversation with everyone who might be in right. your business just either by phone or face to face so how do you manage all of that and there are a whole lot of tools sitting out there constant contact is one mm -hmm. of those it's mm -hmm. an email marketing program where you put together uh, your email list and group them based on hey these are current we'll use the chamber for example mm -hmm. you've got current members obviously right. You've got folks that you would like to join, prospective members. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, sort of adjunct and support groups, whether it be city officials or county mm -hmm. officials. And then um, you've got other chambers around. And so if you load up this software, any of these, and, and you know, MailChimp's another one, but uh, Constant Contact sort of seems to have risen to the top. Yeah. Um, and uh, if you get all your email addresses in, you can then design really nice uh, whether it be newsletters or surveys or notices or any of those types of things mm -hmm. um, and let people know and reach them on a, you know, on a regular basis. But you can also go in and create campaigns that are if someone joins your constant contact list, then they immediately get a welcome. Mm -hmm. um, if someone uh, actually decides to leave they can get a sorry you're leaving but uh, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but then you can also queue up stuff that quarterly they always get it hey we're here reminders and mm -hmm. stuff and so um, on the 26th before we do the get your business online Melanie deal from constant contacts gonna do something for us isn't she she is she is gonna kind of walk us through uh, how to set up a constant contact um, account and uh, you know set up campaigns and that sort of thing um, the the chamber itself is now has a constant contact account and um, we're just starting to use it a little bit uh, which is a vast improvement over what we have been doing which was you know just throwing out a bunch of emails usually at, a, at the same time um, just because you know that's it's easy to do it that way right well you can basically set up constant contact to do the same thing. You can sit down with it for just, you know, 30 minutes or something like that, set up several campaigns and then schedule them to go out when you want them to go out. And it's, it's pretty powerful. I mean, one of the things I failed to mention uh, that I had discovered a month ago is that constant contact will give a free copy uh, to any chamber mm -hmm. uh, anywhere in the U.S. and so that we got a free copy for the chamber. Yeah. But then it also gives a 25% discount to any chamber member, which mm -hmm. is, uh, I think, could be a very important benefit for some of the members of the chamber. So I thought it was important to sort of bring that into the forefront. Up until then, I had been sort of recommending people use MailChimp um, because you had a free copy of it. But now getting the full-blown version of, of Constant Contact, um, it's, it's really powerful. And the other thing that Constant Contact will do is when you tell folks what industry you're in, it will actually go and show you the statistics about when you should be publishing. Mm -hmm. You know, that right. because people in this industry – or folks who are looking for this industry tend to look on Saturdays at 10 a.m. or they mm -hmm. tend to look on Mondays through Friday or whenever it may be your demographic. Right. So the more you can tell constant contact about who you're trying to reach, the more they'll tell you because they have this vast network of everybody sure. sending it. Sure. So they know when the best times are to click and they'll tell you, hey, you're fixing to run a campaign for this industry. Here's maybe when you ought to be scheduling yeah. it. So yeah. It has lots of power beyond. And then when you do send a campaign out, it monitors who clicks it, who reopens it, what they do with it. And so you can start to find out if, you know, okay, I'm sending it out to 300 people and nobody's opening it. Yeah. What's okay. The this is not a yeah. very effective campaign. What right. do I need to do about it? And it, they will help you. Right. Right. Um, so put a picture of a puppy in there or something like that. Right. So they'll click it. But <laughs> no, 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 no. A cat. <laughs> a cat. A yes. cat video. A, a cat video. Absolutely. Be Absolutely. Much preferable falling off a table or something like that. Those are the ones I enjoy. The no, most. the one I posted where the, where the parrot was 
pestering the cat. Pestering. <laughs> There's a cat sitting there and a parrot beside it, and it keeps poking it and pushing it. And the cat's just sitting there, you know, and it's looking it in the face and it's poking it. And then finally, at about the 27 second mark, the cat goes, <laughs> and the bird goes flying. <laughs> well, now this, we're getting a little off topic here, but um, have you heard about the video that has gone viral of the woman putting on the Chewbacca? Yes, mask. I have actually seen 77 this. million views in 24 hours. To cue this, to cue this one up, <laughs> this mom, ostensibly, you never know today, but yeah, ostensibly this mom went out and bought a Chewbacca mask, mm -hmm. which when you open your mouth, it makes the Chewbacca noise, which I can't, ah, you know, yeah, yeah. right, it does yeah. that. And she gets so tickled when she, she even says before she puts it on that she's not letting her, it's hers, it's not her son's mm -hmm. uh, Chewbacca mask. And she puts it, she's sitting in her car and she puts the mask on, uh -huh. she uh -huh. opens the mouth, it does its thing, and she just starts laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's basically two minutes of her laughing, which she is so happy. That's now, right. she may be on drugs. I have no <laughs> idea, but but this woman, is. she says it's the simple things, joy in life, and she is just blissed out by this Chewbacca mask, which is right. just the funniest thing. And you can't help but laugh, laugh. with her. And uh, I mean, and the, the smile on her face is genuine. I, yeah. I don't believe that this was really yeah. set up. If it was, then my faith in humanity is lost. Right. <laughs> but uh, I actually was reading some stuff and they said that Hasbro has, according to Hasbro, they have sold out. Well, it is a pretty good in about 24 hours. It's a pretty good Star Wars yeah. mask. I mean, you open <laughs> yeah, your cute. mouth and it's Chewbacca. It is. You know, it you, is. So the jaw moves, and, but uh, yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, um, but uh, so maybe we'll we'll stumble upon something like that in one of these uh, seminars. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, remind people about the um, uh, the time for the constant contact. Is that three o'clock? Yes. Three, okay. Three, <laughs> three to four thirty. Why don't you remind them, Lee? Because I, my memory is not so good. Yeah, I think three, three to four thirty on uh, the Thursday, the twenty sixth at, at Wallace Presbyterian Church, Church right. two hundred five right. West Main Street. That's right. <laughs> there we go. And if folks are interested in, uh, you don't have to attend both. If you want to attend one yeah. or the other, yeah. you can reach out to Lou at the Chamber or Kurt um, or me at Small Business Center. Yep. Absolutely. We can get you more information or you can just show up. Easy to find. Yeah. Yeah. Just show up too. And uh can't guarantee pizza at, at three o'clock session. No, so you're, you're on your little own early. Yeah, yeah. You, you should have eaten maybe lunch. We'll have some bottled water or something like that. <laughs> so maybe some coffee. Okay. But I mean, these are a couple of things. I had not offered a constant contact seminar, but now that I have found Melanie, I'm going to start offering this, mm -hmm. you know, a couple mm -hmm. of times a year through the small business center, just trying to help businesses um, start marketing and advertising advertising themselves, understand how to do it, and then understand how to do it through the internet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. and find the information that, or use the information that it gives you to see how effective you are. Um, good constant content. And the other thing that I should mention about constant content, because I've been using it now for over two years at the Small Business Center, is you call them, they answer the phone, and they will help you. Wow. Um, and okay. so they have really good customer support. Um, which I can't always say has been available with other products. Sure. And so they yeah. are very yeah. eager. In fact, they will uh, come to you and say, hey, you haven't used it in a while. Are you having problems? And right. so they right. really good organization. So I'm impressed with that. I'll have to say I was really blown away by the reporting on it. Um, yeah. I, I did not realize that, you know, I knew I would be able to see, okay, you sent out 211 and 30 people opened it. And that kind of, I know you'd be able to see who those 30 people were. Yep. That was kind of cool. Yep. Um, and, and, and then you go through and say, these are the folks who didn't you know, like, uh, come on, dude, I, I, <laughs> we're friends. Well, <laughs> Why didn't you open it? <laughs> well, and, and then it starts to get you some information on, okay, maybe this campaign wasn't appealing to them. Right. And so you start to figure out what works for whom mm -hmm. and when it works. And maybe it didn't go out at the right time because, right. you know, when I was working on it and got ready to launch it, it was telling me, you know, have you checked to see when these industries and you could have mm -hmm. scheduled it to go out then and a little later, you know, there's mm -hmm. some other things mm -hmm. that you, that we will learn more as we gather more data about yeah. who's clicking and who's not clicking in. And, you know, one of the things I found in the small business center is that there isn't a single format that reaches everybody. Mm -hmm. And it may be that other things have to be done for certain sure. groups because this isn't a good fit or, a good, right. you know, it doesn't work for them, which is fine. All you want to know is that who's getting your message and who's not. And then what else can I do for the who's not? Right. Right. And one thing I think, um, I'll, I'll just, 
speak personally on this because it's something that I've noticed and I had read about it and it's really coming true here is uh, a lot of businesses around now are starting to rely on Facebook advertising and it does work, but the free stuff isn't working anymore. No, it does not work. Um, we kind of relied on that in a big way for the, uh, the 5k because that has worked for us in years past and you'd ask people to share it and it, it's getting all these views and people were signing up and uh, that was working really well until this year. Yeah. And this year, the, it's not even getting the views. Boy, boy, you have, you've hit on something that's really important and it, I'm not going to um, try very hard not to make a value statement out mm -hmm. of this, just a matter of fact statement. Facebook has moved to the point where paid goes before unpaid. Absolutely. They've also gotten very elaborate algorithms that if you're posting frequently and don't have engagement, in mm -hmm. other words, people are not engaging with what you're mm -hmm. posting, you're getting penalized and you're mm -hmm. getting pushed mm -hmm. and folks that are following you will not see your post because you're right. getting pushed further and further mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a couple of things here. One, Facebook ads work. Yeah. Yeah. And they, do. they don't have to be expensive. No. I think the minimum is five dollars a day. And mm -hmm. um, you can be very specific about the audience you want to show the ad. Once you do that, you move up the list because mm -hmm. uh, you're a paying customer. Um, so I do recommend them. But right now, they're only good at getting likes. Likes don't mean business. Right. Right. Absolutely. Now, for a 5K, likes are good. Sure. Um, for selling something, the next part is understanding how to convert likes to business. Right. And that's got to be that's a call a, to action. That, mm -hmm. That's right. It, yeah. It's a, another layer of what you have to do. Uh, once you get a following, now you've got to convert that following to actually buying stuff. Right. And that's a little bit different. But you're absolutely right. The free day of Facebook is, is gone. It, it, it really is. So, um, and, and I was guilty of this myself for a while. I was like, why would I? pay for advertising anywhere because I can put it on Facebook. It's free and I'm reaching as many people as, as possible. But then, yeah, I did see the engagement was dropping off and, and people telling me they didn't see things that I had posted. Right. And uh, here recently, I just happened to think about a restaurant here in town that I wanted to see if they were posting things. And I was like, I haven't seen anything from them in a while. I won't call their name. But um, I just thought, you know, what's What's going on? Are they not doing anything with their Facebook page? I went and looked it up. Oh, no, they've been posting. I just wasn't seeing it. That's right. So uh, and, and there was something posted just about every day. Now, there are some things that you can do to improve the probability that you see what your friends or the businesses you follow. If you go find them just like you did mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. go like them, mm -hmm. they will move up. Yeah. Um, and so because what you've essentially done is engaged. Right. And so right. if you help them through engagement, they will move up and it increases the probability. But there's only two ways now to uh, be sure that those who have liked you or are following you will see your post. One is to pay for it. Mm -hmm. The other one is to have them engage. So what I'm advising um, clients to do is post less mm -hmm. and get engagement. You right. know, make it a very compelling post and, and get 10 people or more to, to share it or to like it or mm -hmm. uh, those kinds of things. Then you're going to move up. If you just post 10 times a day and right. no one's responding to it, you're actually going to get punished and it's worse than posting. Not at all. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and this is an interesting discussion to get into. I don't know what you want to talk about today. What you're doing you good. Talk about whatever, mm -hmm. uh, but don't I, we usually, I, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> this is our hour. That's uh, right. <laughs> but, um, I, before you go, I will remind this is you, our hour, isn't it? <laughs> I will remind you that you are listening to the Community and Small Biz Update at Duplin County, uh, sponsored by James Brunt Community College, your bridge to success in the Small Business Center at James Brunt. I am Lee Woodard, your host, and our guest today is Kurt Simpson. And now, Kurt, where were you going? Oh, where I was going with that is there is a friend on Facebook. And I thought this was an interesting uh, illustration of how just because you're young doesn't mean you know how to use this stuff um, because she is a business owner. And she actually said last night on Facebook, I need somebody to explain social media to me. I don't know anything about Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. And she needs to use it. And I said, well, come on by the office. We'll talk about it sometime if you want. Um, she 
probably needs to get in one of Martin Brossman's uh, seminars or something. With yeah, you send guys. her to me. But, we'll yeah, we'll yeah. go through you what know, she can do. And, you know. <laughs> okay. We'll send her to me. And, have I talked to her before? Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, let's work on it. Yeah, we will. We will. Um, Offline. Because, I, you know, there's it's a process. Yeah. You don't want to kill yourself, but there are some basic mm-hmm. things you need to do. And then once you've done those, you need to build on them. Well, she, she's made for Instagram and Pinterest. Okay. Uh, she, she would be perfect on, on those things. I mean, she, she knows how to use Facebook to a degree, but, uh, Instagram would be perfection for her, right. I would think. And, okay. and I'm starting to use Instagram a little bit. Uh, it does seem to be a less crowded space. Right. Um, so, you know, the likelihood that someone's going to see what I post on Instagram is a little bit higher than, than probably Facebook now. Uh, and it's an ordinary migration. Um, you know, all the middle aged folks are on Facebook and we'll mm-hmm. soon get to Instagram, you know, right? and then new ones <laughs> will pop up for the young folks and already. Oh, have. well they're on Snapchat. Right. And, and Snapchat is, I was such a non-believer in Snapchat and this, girl over here was using snapchat for long before me uh but yeah and now i'm seeing legitimate businesses on snapchat right. it's not just for nude selfies anymore yep <laughs> <laughs> there's so I always many things, do that to there's you, so many I? things i would like to say to that um <laughs> thank god the, the the base of facebook doesn't do it anymore <laughs> given its demographic but i'm not even going there oh dear god uh, no, no, no no so right. but, uh, no you're right but then you know that brings up an interesting point all of a sudden you know your head starts spinning like beetlejuice how do what do i use how do yeah. i use it and that's where some of the other tools like hootsuite come into play mm-hmm. where you have one common interface you connect all your social media platforms right. And you determine what posts go to where you can skew them up in advance um, where you have one place to go as opposed to trying to do five or six or or those types of things. So those tools exist today and are important. Um, But I tend to tell folks, if you know your customer demographic decently, by decently, I mean gender, age, um, you know, those kinds of stratifications, it's not hard to find the right social media platform right right i totally agree now the one uh that i think that people probably are completely discounting that they don't need to because yeah nobody uses it the way they use facebook but it's google plus absolutely uh google plus you've got to be on there or you're going to get penalized big time because uh facebook yeah that might be where all your friends are and where you see they're they're being active but google plus just get your information on there. Post right. something every once in a while, and um, yeah. well, you know when you <clears throat> use it. When you post to Facebook, you can simultaneously post to Google Plus. You yeah. can, you know, you can keep these things parallel. You have to be cautious with that. If you just redundantly post across multiple uh, platforms, the search engines are smart enough to realize that's what you're doing, and you do sure. get penalized a bit for that. So you need some unique content on all of them. Mm-hmm. But since getting your um, business on the map is Google, given that the hands down the primary search engine is Google uh, compared to Bing or Yahoo or any of them, how could you not be on Google Plus? Yeah, unless yeah. you have a conspiracy theory mentality or something and don't want to populate it i mean right there's a limit to how much i can swim upstream i'm going down i'm going coast with google exactly right exactly right i my my head is bloody from beating it against a brick wall i'm a little bit tired of that so yeah i'm just going to go along with everything that's right (laughs) privacy what's privacy (laughs) we live in a small town there is no such thing as privacy anyways right um, yeah, that's an interesting <clears throat> thought. I mean, yeah, if you do live in a small town, privacy is a um, not that that's one of the the cons of living in a small. Everyone knows oh, yeah. your life, yeah. so maybe we're better adapted at social media <laughs> use because we live here. Maybe because we are. I'm not. Yeah, everybody. Knows there is no I'm, New York City anonymity here. You right, are no. are being watched by everybody. And I know <laughs> I I do understand the risks because we had. Um, uh, I show not too many weeks ago about some of the risk. It ended up in a very pessimistic one. And so I, I do, I do know that, you know, your ID theft it can, can create some major headaches and loss of money and, and those types of things. But my general, my life is pretty boring. And if someone really wants to plug into my email, Hey man, knock yourself out. Right. If it gives you a few moments of joy, I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not getting not that, much, that out much out of it. We only share this, you know. Um, so there's not a lot to hide. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but 
in fairness, um, I have for the first time put some uh, apps on my phone mm -hmm. that will tell me if someone has tried to connect to my phone, yeah. will tell me. Um, so I am getting some alerts if some apps have been uh, questionably accessed by yeah. others than me. Um, there was so a I sign am, in from a, a tablet. That's or right. something. Yep, yep, I mean, yep. So I'm starting to get those notices yeah. and can try to remember if I did it or not. Right. <laughs> So far, it's been me forgetting, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, you know, so, and if, one of the things I did have some pretty good security when I was traveling through airports and stuff a lot. Uh, there was some security on the phone, and mm -hmm. all of the important things ran through a, a, a VPN or something like that. So yeah. I'm, I'm not saying protection isn't important. It's sure. no different than sex. I had to get mine in there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> had to work it in. I didn't know when it was, but I did. <laughs> But you don't need to be silly, but right, at right. the end of the day, there's a limit to how much we can protect ourselves if we want to use this technology. Right. And right. I see the benefits outweigh in the... Absolutely. Well, and my my opinion has always been that uh, the greatest identity theft threat that you face, especially if you live out in the country, is that mailbox at the end of your driveway. You know, there are credit card bills sitting in that all day long, and all it takes is someone just going through and snatching some uh, some bills out of your credit card or out of your uh, mailbox and they've got a lot of what they need so that to me is a bigger threat than anything online i don't know if i agree but it's a threat i don't doubt that i've always felt because for whatever reason there was enough protection put in with a credit card if my mm -hmm. credit card gets stolen all i have to do is report it as soon as i know it and i'm not liable to pay right. And if I continue to uh, refuse payment on things I've disputed, they'll take the card away, but sure. I'm not yeah. penalized for yeah. it. So there's protection for credit cards. Mm -hmm. What there isn't protections for apparently is your income tax <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> refund or your health care. Right. Um, and yeah, those things are out there. So I think mm -hmm. there's some interesting ones, which by the way, um, I have uh, where uh, my retirement uh, sits and any investments I have, they're going to start using voice activated passwords. Interesting. Uh, when I call and want to talk to someone about my account, mm -hmm. my voice, in fact, my password is my voice is my password. And when I say that, <laughs> uh -huh. they'll know whether it's my voice or not. Gotcha. I hope nobody recorded that when you said that. Well, I, you know, I, I, there's a lot I want to know about it. I have chosen not to activate it until I do some research. This is going up on YouTube, you know. <laughs> But I, well, I'm sure you can just Google it, um, but voice activated passwords. And then the other one for phones is motion activated passwords. Apparently we mm -hmm. each reach over and grab our phone and bring it to our ear kind of in same. such a unique way. It's like a mm -hmm. fingerprint and that mm -hmm. we all do it differently. And so it's, it's fairly easy for the phone to know it's you versus someone else who picked it up. And if gotcha. you pick your phone up, it can unlock itself right then. Cause it's you. Yeah. Of course with me, it breaks things all the time. If I get my broken arm, do I have to get a new password? Right. <laughs> Well, I just break the phones. Right, okay. I, I'm on my third one in the last oh, six months or so. So, you know. Yeah, I'm not going to jinx myself, but I've never <laughs> had that issue. <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. Yeah, so I but don't. I'm now on iPhone. Oh, yeah, and I'm trying right. to learn how to use that. By the way, did you ever get a cable? No. Well, actually, I, yeah, I did. I ordered okay. some from Amazon. Okay, sorry so about they're, that. They're coming. It's cool. It's I brought cool. it to you three times and you never did. gave it you to did. you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, uh, that, that's coming in the mail from Amazon here. So uh, iPhone 6? 6S. 6S. You've 6S. Got a, that's a good phone. So did, it's, have uh, you established a relationship with Siri yet? I, I She knows my voice. Oh, she does. She does. I talked to her a little bit the other night. Okay. Was, yeah. do, um, do you have a nickname for yourself? <laughs> I, I know. I, do I need to do that? <laughs> oh, you can ask her to call you anything you want. Really? Yeah. She okay. It'll add that name as your signature on the end of your email. So be careful. Oh, geez. Oh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't well, I'm have not going to do that then. It, it doesn't have to. You can stop that. You can ask her. She will ask you if you want to include this in your contact information. She calls me the master of the universe. Oh, sweet. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, she can call you anything. She will call you anything you ask her to call you. Um, <laughs> as well as she'll call anyone else what you would like. That you can rename oh, wow. all your contacts. Oh, yeah. And so, that's uh, Call, an area we're not going to go into then. But it's pretty good. And then you got to go through, you know, where are the Idiot. dead bodies? How do I get rid of a dead body? Okay. How many licks for Tootsie Pop? You gotcha. know, you go through all of those and she'll be glad to respond. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay. And well, make I'll sure before the day's over, you tell her you love her and see what she says. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Well, actually, I asked her if she loved me, and she said, well, she was starting to like me or something. (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, I I look at it as an interesting way to look at the coding group, you know, because all of these are canned responses, although I think Siri now has some artificial intelligence Mm -hmm. built in, but most of that is about anticipating what you want. Um, But the voice recognition is very good, and... But these silly things that we would say to it say a lot about who was coding mm-hmm. and what their personalities were sure. and what they were thinking yeah. about. Yeah. The- now, did you hear the story? This um, was, man, we've, we've gotten off on some tangents, well, uh, but it's fun. I don't care. I, I, uh, <laughs> um, this was maybe a month or so ago, maybe six weeks, something like that. I think Microsoft actually put out an artificial intelligence character yep. and uh, they had to take it down within about 48 hours or something like that because it became incredibly racist because yes. people were playing with it and um, it, they, it was, you know, it was a Nazi. It was all sorts of stuff. It's just weird. But, um, but artificial intelligence is working. You know, these things right. are learning. They're learning what you teach them. Uh, but it, that was just a bizarre story to me. That, well, that, it, that particular one was intended to go after a younger audience mm-hmm. and was trying to be hipper and mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. colloquial in its speech and yeah. looking for um, trying to anticipate what you're going to do. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. it went to the sordid side very, very fast. Mm-hmm. And in part because that's sort of the limits that if you're if you're a new user you kind of test those boundaries. Oh sure, yeah. You know, let's see how bad we can make this. But if guy. you think about it, what are we teaching? You know, yeah. there's a you know, <laughs> what are we teaching others around us? You know, uh-huh. that little five year old running around is not a whole lot different than that app. Right, um, right. That's true. That's and true. So it's well, sad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well actually it's it's a little like what I was saying about Snapchat earlier is it Snapchat at first was basically known as the New selfie. selfies. Right. That's all people used it for. But now there is a legitimate use for it. And people are using it for that. And I'm assuming are going away from, I'm assuming, nobody's sending me nude selfies anyway. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, and even though now this is yet another point. Uh, I think it was Thursday was send a nude selfie day. Oh, was it? It was. It was. It was a trending uh, uh, topic on Facebook and Twitter. Nobody sent me one on Thursday either. <clears throat> I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just old. Let's see. Last Thursday, I was not thinking of that. Uh, just trying it, to get some it was work just done. There. It was just there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you know, all of this, while funny to talk about, it, it, what's really interesting is social media it kind of exposes all of us in a sense of yeah. – what our personalities are like, some of the deviant things we think about, but also, you know, all of the other um, very uh, socially acceptable ways to, to, <laughs> to, to try and use it. And it's in its infancy. We don't know what, how, no. we don't really understand it or how to use it. It is another okay. way of communication. A lot of us that are older think it's a poorer way of communication because mm-hmm. we'd rather have face to face or, sure. you know, at least real voice. Um, but I'm not sure that's true. I think what we're saying is that's what I grew up with and therefore that's what I'm comfortable with. And so I'm not sure I would go so far as to say this is worse. I just think this is unknown. This is, we don't, we don't really know how to engage. And, um, but I, I'm not one of those who thinks the humanity is doomed because we are, uh, using social media in, in, uh, exchange of face to face. I think contact's important. But I, if nothing else, in the last five years, haven't we seen social media become more personable? Mm-hmm. Um, nude selfies included. I mean, there's a lot of more personable <laughs> things happening. And I tend to think these things sort themselves out. I, I tend to they believe do. humanity's pretty good and we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we do. And, uh, you know, I, my own personal preferences, they shift all the time. Um, I, I know that two or three years ago, I didn't want anybody to call me. Don't call me, text me or send me an email or something like that. That's the way to get in touch with me. That's the way you're, you're going to get a response from me. Well, now it's actually make a phone call again because I get so many emails now that, uh, I barely pay attention to the emails, the text I pay more attention to, but a phone call is actually what will get my response now. 
That's that's interesting. <laughs> I I, t- I tend to like the emails because mm-hmm. I can arrange them and archive them sure. and keep certain things up top, even so I don't forget about them. As mm-hmm. I get older, I forget mm-hmm. things. So email gives me a more permanent record. So I do like that. Right. But you're absolutely right. I'm inundated with uh, emails. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love to know. Uh, how much time I spend deleting emails oh a God. day. Um, mm-hmm. I, it's a lot. Anytime I have a free break and you see me sliding my thumb over on mm-hmm. an iPhone, mm-hmm. I'm just deleting emails. Just rid of stuff, yeah. And, you know, I could put them in spam, but apparently I like the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm like sitting here going, this is the 10th time today I've done this. I was like, you know, you've deleted that email from Viking Cruises now. <laughs> The tenth time today. Why don't you just say no more? Yeah, yeah. Uh, apparently, I have that problem of uh, you know easier to delete than it is to just stop it because it may be that one time Lee you haven't responded. We're giving you a free Danube cruise. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense why I don't stop it, but I haven't. Right. But uh, I actually went through and unsubscribed from a few this past week because I was just I was tired of seeing these few. Right. I don't know why because there are 150 more that I don't care right. about, but just tired of these few. So. Yeah. And texts are, are good, but, um, I tend to use texts for right now. Exactly. You know, um, they're not for the quick one word answer. Yeah, yeah. In an hour from now, I will have forgotten it. And, right. You know, right. So same here. same here. But, um, so, um, what's, uh, when we talk about, uh, what's coming up in the chamber, any new stuff we've got, we talked a little bit about the, um, uh, the train, the training coming up on the 26th mm-hmm. on Thursday at the Wallace Presbyterian Church for constant contact from three to four thirty, and then um, at uh, six we're going to do get your business online. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else that uh, is being talked about with the chamber? There actually is, um, and this is. <clears throat> with all this talk of social media and not face to face, all this stuff, we're going to have a business after hours <laughs> and we're going to have people coming together and talking face to face on, I believe it is June 7th. I should okay. probably check that and make sure, but if that is a Thursday, I don't know, um, at, at Vident, uh, family medicine in okay. Wallace, uh, across from the river landing office. Um, they are going to be having a, uh, a, a, an after hours there and there'll be food and, and all sorts of stuff. So we hope people will come out, uh, for that. If that's not the right date, I don't know. You said June 7th. <clears throat> no, I was thinking that's it. That's a Tuesday. Uh, well, it's probably not it then. The ninth? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's probably, contact. I think it was, yeah, yeah. Check your constant contact. contact. We'll, we'll email you. We will put it up on the Facebook page, uh, right. and, uh, and, and get out the information that way. But sometime in early June, mm-hmm. we're going to be meeting up at, uh, at Biden family medicine in okay. Wallace. And, right. uh, I think that'll probably start about five 30. There'll be food. There will be drinks. Uh, there will be nice people and uh just come see what's going on there they are expanding quite a bit yep um that's and, my uh mott blair is my doctor so oh good yeah. good good deal um so a lot of cool things happening at biden actually and i'll, yep. I'll talk about that just for just a second sure i'm, <clears throat> I'm on the hospital foundation so I, I know more about what's going on um but what they are doing uh as far as uh being a stroke center is really cool uh, they Which have got, in our, our neck of the woods is important. Oh, this is the stroke belt. Absolutely. Yeah. And and that was uh, part of I what... I said the, neck of the woods, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I caught that. <laughs> but, You're not going to uh, do me today because I'm on the game. <laughs> let's just, let's just like, see I, how many wrong things we can say like, today. <laughs> um, but if, if you go in presenting signs of a stroke at uh, Vident Duplin Hospital in Kenansville, they are going to put you on a machine basically that is showing doctors at Wake Forest uh, your face. They're going to talk to you. They're going to interview you. And it, this is all in real time, true telemedicine. And uh, it's really cool. This thing's like a little robot. And uh, they are um, determining whether you really are having a stroke or not. And this is, is just just uh really cutting edge technology there yeah so it's pretty cool even some stuff that's not cutting edge because i mentioned mott blair and they were part of Vident. uh you get a patient portal when you're there yeah for appointments you can see what you've paid so you Mm -hmm. when it comes to doing your taxes for how much you spend on medicine you can 
uh, request uh, refills to any prescriptions. You mm-hmm. can have a, you know, a conversation with your doctor, your lab results come to you. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that's there. And again, I, you know, here's benefits, you know, that I think are great. And so mm-hmm. um, certainly it's not little old Duplin general hospital. No, anymore. it's not. Cause I used to be on the board when it was just Duplin. Yeah. General. <laughs> and, um, but no, it's exciting. And mm-hmm. even going, you know, give, Pink Hill, a shout out at, um, they've put in that one gig up, one gig down internet access. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. you're going to be able to yeah. see within the county satellite areas that can do telemedicine or mm-hmm. anything that needs that level of bandwidth. Um, so exciting times, if you think about it, of, of things that are coming. Um, just talk uh, the first Thursdays, the yeah. first yeah. Thursday evenings. That's not really a chamber uh chamber no, sports kind of a, a yeah this is uh the wallace downtown merchants association uh which has just kind of created itself um marlene carcopo had a lot to do with that um, um bridget uh evans uh hope smith <clears throat> they have all just kind of pulled this thing together and it's not a chamber event but we certainly support it um uh, and uh first thursdays in uh, downtown Wallace, and I think they're going to do this for the foreseeable future, first Thursday of, Thursday of the month, all of the businesses that want to participate are staying open later, and that's most of the businesses downtown. And uh, they may stay open till 8 or something like that. They're bringing in food trucks. They're bringing in bands. Uh, the last one, they had uh, the food truck from Paul's Place Hot Dogs uh, down at Rocky Point. Uh, everybody loves Paul's Place. And they had a little band playing uh, at the same time. It was cool. It was yeah. cool. So folks are coming out and, um, you know, the, I think business has been pretty good. Yep. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a neat thing that yeah. they're doing. So. Well, now one of the things that I didn't, um, ask you is cause I, you know, I haven't asked you in a while, how's the real estate market in Duplin County <clears throat> improving? That's what I kind of it figured. Is, it is improving. I, I'm not going to say it's going gangbusters yet, but it is improving. I'm seeing uh, business pick up. I'm talking to other agents who are also seeing business pick up. And uh, I think maybe our prices are improving a little bit too. Uh, which so is the floor has been reached, perhaps. I think we have. I think we've we've hit the bottom. Uh, we kind of wallowed around on the bottom for a while, but uh, we seem to be picking back up just a little bit. And uh, that's certainly a good thing for for me to see and if yeah. you're trying to sell a home what's the percentage of of uh the improvement commercial versus um personal uh it's it's almost all personal the the commercial um actually well and as as far as sales of commercial not a whole lot happening there uh but the uh, retail spaces like downtown wallace right now i don't think there's anything open I don't think there's anything open in the, well, on the, on the Western side of main street. Now on the Eastern side of main street, the buildings are not in good condition. Uh, There are a few that are, that are, but we've got some empty spaces there, but they have roof problems, that sort of thing. So those need to be um, addressed before you're really going to be able to put anybody in there. Okay. So the, uh, the viable spaces are pretty much filled up. Okay. That's excellent. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's good. I mean, it took us about two years uh, after the implosion 2008 mm-hmm. to really feel the effect. Uh, it's yeah, taken us yeah. about two years since the improvement to mm-hmm. feel it. So mm-hmm. yeah. that would actually be a nice little curve to say it is, it's real and not it, a bubble. It really would. really would. Actually, and I, I am forgetting one space downtown that has not got a tenant in it. If you want to open a restaurant please <laughs> come see me uh, because there is a great little restaurant space in downtown Wallace and uh, we'd love to get somebody in there. If you're really <laughs> excited about opening a restaurant and you think that space is good for you, I would recommend you don't come to the small business center because <laughs> I'm probably going to discourage you from doing it. But you know, Hey, uh, we are at cross purposes here, Lee, <laughs> which happens sometimes. <laughs> no, I, actually, you know, I actually have some clients that may be looking in that direction. Okay. I, I, I do spend a lot of time with, with clients that say they want to open up a restaurant because it's tough. Tough it business. is a it well you know the statistics aren't great if you start a business anyway no, you know no. um one in three are going to be dead in six months and you know you can yeah. just look at it and get very pessimistic restaurants are two to three times harder than that and they mm-hmm. cost two to three to ten times more to get into it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so it, it's a, a huge risk and so what i really try to make them do is a more thorough business plan yeah. and really 
walk through it and how to mitigate the risk, how to spend mm-hmm. a little more money in renting stuff instead of committing to buy and sure. protecting themselves. So like, it doesn't mean it can't work. It just means that the it's a, a higher hill to climb. Right, um, right. And Absolutely. make sure you understand going in. But I have never uh, worked with a client. I always tell them the decision to go or not to go, to expand, not to expand, it's is your yours. Decision. Right. It right. is yours. It is not mine. I'm here to try to help you in whatever way I can and whatever you decide to make that decision as good as it can possibly be. Um, and so, you know, it is at the end of the day their decision. But just recognize not all businesses are as easy to start. Um, and just because you can cook really good food doesn't mean you can run a good restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it takes about seven years to really have a track record in a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And it's really more than 10 years. If you've been there for 10 years, there's a good chance you will you can stay there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really hard. And, and Duplin County is a tougher place. Uh, yeah. We don't eat out a lot during the week, you know, and... Uh, so it tend to go to drive throughs Yeah, we, we don't have the best diet either. <laughs> no, you know. no. Unfortunately, those with the more nutritious menus don't tend to get, you know. So, yeah. a, again, I don't want to come off as a pessimistic. Don't do it. But it's just understand what you're getting into. Right, right. And, and if you've been a, a successful restaurant tour, then, yeah, you probably have a good idea of what you're getting into. Right. Right. So, Absolutely. And nobody wants more restaurants in Wallace than me. <laughs> you know, I like to eat. Um, and so we, we don't often have a lot to choose from. Yeah. But I do see some other things that are happening, whether it be agritourism, um, you know, farm to, to market, farm to table, farm to restaurant. And so I think some of those things will help as, as we start to see some of those ventures mature out of the small business center. And so I think the restaurants in many ways trail that. Sure. You know, so I, you know, I'm hopeful, um, but we still need to work on population growth and we need to work on job growth. Yep. yep. Now, That's one great. of the things we haven't mentioned that we should have before now is the new biz. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> the new biz competition is, uh, coming, uh, up and well, it's already up and running. We've fully funded. Uh, you can go to www.duplinedc.com slash news. And there you will see uh, the, the um, uh, information about the competition. You will also have an application. If you're interested, you can fill it out. It's an online form. You can fill it. You can send it to either James Wolf at the Duplin Economic Development Commission, or you can send it to the Small Business Center. We already have applications in. Um, the competition, uh, you've got uh, May and June to get your applications in. Decision will be made in early July about finalists. The finalists will have about six weeks to get their business plan uh, turned in. They'll present to a judge. There'll be a single winner. The winner will get about $10,000 cash. Um, They will also get uh, in-kind support, free advertising with the newspaper, uh, assistance in building their social media um, uh, profile and web presence, help in getting their web page done, their taxes done, legal assistance, you know, all of those types of things. Uh, I bet they could get some real estate help. I, you know, you know maybe, <laughs> but bottom line is, you know, there's two tracks. If you need a brick and mortar store, uh, and we actually have an application for jobs and we have an application for a store. Um, right. so, uh, if you need brick and mortar, uh, then we'll work on trying to get you into a property that exists that, um, fits where your business needs to be somewhere in the County. Mm-hmm. Um, and working on making sure that you sign a three-year lease but get your first year's rent free those kinds of things and if your um, addition to your business or new business creates two or more jobs then you qualify as well the business has to be uh in duplin county you don't have to live in duplin county but your business has, business to, be has here. to be here yeah um and so that's up and running people are looking at it i've seen several people forward it off of the facebook page of the small business center and you know those types of things so we're up and running. So if folks are interested, we really want to get that message out. Cool. Good deal. So yeah. I had forgotten to do that. Um, so we blew right past our time. That's, I that's think okay. we did. <laughs> uh, I'm, it's it, our hour. <laughs> we'll well, do anything we want to with it. Welcome to the Curtin Lee Hour, sponsored by James Sprint. No. <laughs> well, folks, you have done it again. Like they used to say on Click and Clack, you've wasted an entire hour listening to the, the Community and Small Biz Update for Duplin County. I am Lee Woodard. Our guest today was Kurt Simpson. The show is sponsored by James Brunt Community College, your bridge to success, and the Small Business Center at James Brunt. A lot of good things going on in the county. We should feel good about that. Folks, tomorrow's going to be a better day, so get outside and enjoy the weather and have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. See you.